Despite never having flown before, SpaceX's Starship is one of the first commercial cargo and personnel contracts to the moon. But when will it become available, and why is Starship so appealing? Let's find out everything about it today. Pre-space era science fiction fans would be familiar with the notion of regular space trips written about by authors. While ordinary space launches of satellites and the like have reached a point of general public disinterest due to the regularity and relative safety of these accomplishments, we haven't yet reached the milestone of fully reusable space vehicles, where the entire rocket ship is used over and over again, as a daily travel rocket ship to the moon might be. While the Space Shuttle pioneered a reusable landable space vehicle that could be crewed, launched, and landed again, the most important portion of the launch assembly, the external fuel tank, was not reusable and burned up in the atmosphere. Solid rocket booster engines generated around 85% of the thrust during launch and following burnout. Those SRBs were either ejected and parachuted into the ocean, or they were retrieved, analyzed, repaired, and reused. After each flight, over 5,000 components had to be repaired for reuse, which was an expensive and time-consuming procedure. A private corporation cannot afford to fly as a result of this. SpaceX's Starship program, on the other hand, promises to revolutionize all of that. Let's go through the Starship's primary characteristics and see how close we are to a boringly reliable space commuter vehicle. The SpaceX Starship is intended to be the world's first entirely reusable space transportation system, carrying both personnel and cargo on long-duration interplanetary journeys assisting mankind in returning to the moon and eventually traveling to Mars and beyond. Starship, according to SpaceX, will be the world's most powerful launch vehicle ever created, capable of carrying more than 100 metric tons to Earth's orbit. Starship would be able to transport greater cargo and more humans to different Earth orbits, the moon and Mars, if it could be refueled in orbit using tanker ships. SpaceX will do this with the first Starship orbital mission as early as this month, and hopefully SpaceX will achieve its objective. And we know lunar rover developer Astrolab is looking forward to it as well. Astrolab said last Friday that it has signed a deal with SpaceX to include its flexible logistics and exploration rover, or FLEX, as a payload on an uncrewed Starship cargo mission that might launch as early as mid-2026. According to Jarrett Matthews, the creator and CEO of Astrolab, this is SpaceX's first commercial cargo contract to the lunar surface. Astrolab would be just one of many clients sharing the Starship flight's massive cargo container. Matthews, an engineer who formerly worked at SpaceX and NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, started Astrolab less than four years ago in Hawthorne, California, a short distance from SpaceX headquarters. He estimates that it has roughly 20 full-time staff. Although the Soviet Union, and more subsequently, China placed robotic rovers on the moon in the 1970s and 1980s, the United States has yet to send any. NASA will deploy its Volatiles Investigating Polar Exploration Rover, or Viper, to the lunar South Pole next year to look for water ice. As part of NASA's Artemis mission, astronauts will investigate this area in the coming years. In contrast, Astrolab's moon mission is, for the time being, totally commercial, with no funding from NASA. Matthews will not specify how much it would cost to launch Flex to the moon or how much money Astrolab had raised. He stated that Astrolab would generate money by lifting and placing goods on the lunar surface for clients, which may include research instruments. In the future, the rover might contribute to the construction of lunar infrastructure, effectively enabling last-minute mobility on the moon. You can think of it like UPS for the moon, and in this analogy, Starship is the container ship crossing the ocean, and we are the local distribution solution, Matthew explained. The rover's robotic arm can assist in settling up the payload on the surface. The rover and all of its load weigh more than two tons, the Flex rover is somewhat larger than NASA's Mars Persistence rover and significantly quicker, reaching a peak speed of 15 miles per hour. Astrolab already had many signed agreements for payloads, which looks to be part of the Starship's developing potential market. 
It will be used by SpaceX to launch their second generation of Starlink internet connectivity satellites. Wealthy space travelers have already booked two flights that will fly past the moon but not land. Musk's long-term goal is to build a fleet of starships to transport inhabitants to Mars. Starship is how NASA's astronauts will land on the moon during the Artemis III mission, which is presently slated for 2025. Prior to that, SpaceX will execute an uncrewed trip to show the capabilities of the spacecraft to reach the moon and land in one piece. If those plans remain, the commercial cargo trip with the Astrolab rover might happen next year. This is not the first time a private entity has suggested employing Starship to launch a payload to the moon. Last year, entrepreneur Dennis Tito revealed that he had acquired two of a dozen tickets on SpaceX's second lunar voyage, which is scheduled for later this decade. Akiko Tito is the first woman verified to travel aboard Starship, according to a public release. The voyage to the moon will take around a week, traveling within 40 kilometers of the surface and returning. Ten further tickets aboard Starship remain unsold and available. Billionaire Jared Isaac Mann's Polaris 3 mission is expected to take place in low Earth orbit. Following that, Japanese billionaire Yosaku Mazawa has planned an exciting moon journey, which will be the first human Starship flight around the moon. After that, Tito and the second expedition will follow. As part of the Artemis program, SpaceX has a contract with NASA to conduct the first human landing on the moon. But for the time being, NASA astronauts will launch on a different rocket and meet with Starship in lunar orbit to travel down to the lunar surface and return to orbit. The time frame for all of these missions is dependent on the construction of the Starship spacecraft, which may perform its first orbital test flight from South Texas in the coming months. Following that, the reusable launch system will fly dozens of uncrewed flights, most of which will transport Starlink payloads before humans embark. This is due to the fact that Starship will make a propulsive touchdown back on Earth, something no crew vehicle has ever done before and has no backup in the event of a landing disaster. That ends today's video. Please share your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Thank you for watching.